Hi everybody, I'm uh, Sartan Shanturk and um, now I will um, explain you this um, research we have been doing. Uh, so uh, it is an approach for linking uh, score and audio recordings in Makam music in Turkey. So, um, so it's like the basic structure, the typical one. I will give a short introduction of why we are doing this and then I will explain a little bit of background, um, but more in a like what we, our challenges were, like I'm not going to bore you with lots of musical theory. And then I will explain the methodology. I will um, talk about some initial experiments and that's basically it. So um, I think um, most of us will agree like audio recordings and uh, musical scores are two um, highly valuable uh, sources of uh, information. Like, they are uh, different representations all together, and um, they kind of provide some complementary information. I mean, um, not to talk in a very general, in a very strict sense, but for example, when you have the scores, you can get a easier access to the uh, how the notes progress over the time, uh, instead of doing maybe uh, more, uh, like a little bit more complex audio analysis tools, but on the other hand, when we are working on audio, uh, then we will be able to get uh, uh, expressive elements such as timing differences or uh, the non-notated embellishments and such. So, uh, if we find a way to link these two uh, relevant representations, uh, then maybe we could get actually more information by working uh, together with them. So, um, today, like the initial step we did is to kind of um, focus on this subset of linking, which we define as like section linking. So we believe it's an important uh, step to kind of assess the organizational structure of a piece. So uh, we can once we kind of find the means to link to uh, link the sections given in the score uh, to the audio recordings, if we can associate them. Uh, it will help us to do some um, like complements to other computational tasks. For example, um, you have been hearing about uh, in different sections in a piece, uh, the makam and the usul changes. So how can we find it? Uh, if we actually detect the sections in an automatic manner, then we can uh, focus on only the section and we will be able to uh, get like more uh, insight, like deeper uh, knowledge of uh, how we are actually analyzing the data. So um, I will go through this very quickly because the 17 intervals I think is very outspoken now but uh, the reason why I'm talking about this is um, like the basic idea is we have uh, more target pitches than the typical case uh, which we have seen in the music information retrieval which is mostly done on Western pop. So, and um, we also need to be very careful of uh, the different tunings uh, that, that are used in Makam music. So we cannot really say like, okay, we have the symbolic note and we cannot directly associate it with a frequency. First, we need to know how that frequency was being played. So for this, we need to make a uh, initial tuning analysis, which I will explain to get the Karar note, the tonic, and the intervals that were that are being played, and um, so to kind of get to know like what is this representation, the score representation. This is basically an extended Western notation with which started um, getting prominent after 20th century, and uh, it typically follows Ariel Ezgi Uzulek theory. Um, it's not uh, kind of my job to criticize it or whatever, but we know like it has some uh, differences with theory and I will leave it as is. And these scores, um, they are usually devoid of expressive elements as they weren't actually meant to be given by the composer or uh, to start with, they weren't actually, uh, these scores typically aren't written by the composer. They are usually the transcription of some other guy who written them down so other could uh, kind of um, play it. So. To kind of sum up it, these scores have the prescriptive intent so people could learn it, but it is nonetheless a descriptive um, score. And so um, to kind of give a brief intro to uh, what has been done related to our work, 
Um, so the uh, most typical thing we see in MIR is the worst course detection. It's uh, basically uh, in these situations, uh, what people do is typically get the self-simulatory matrices of the uh, temporal features of um, this uh, music. Like they use MFCCs, they use uh, other features, and uh, they basically calculate um, the distance uh, of the audio with each other, so there's no score involved. And what they are trying to do is, uh, they are trying to find these regularities, which I'm not really sure if you can see them with this projector, but these are basically the annotated uh, chorus sections. And you can kind of guess or see, like, they are shape, their shapes are very resembling each other. And then you can kind of say, like, the others are uh, verses. So, you will be able to get this like uh, general picture in the diagonal, which is showing the verse uh, and chorus structure. But let's think of this uh, second version, like where there is no chorus, uh, as we know in uh, Western pop or similar musics. So to understand it, what are the two dimensions? Uh, so basically, uh, the two dimensions are some temporal audio features. Uh, which were calculated from the audio. So these are the time uh, axis. And uh, what is being done is you basically do some distance matrix and find the distance between every point. So for example, um, if you check it from in a uh, column way, the first, uh, like these stars will be um, the similarity between this part, between this. So for example, how similar is this part to here? So which is pretty similar? As, and you can see it in the diagonal because basically it's the distance by itself. So these are zero, typically. And for example, these are a little bit different. Let's say they have played a different note in here or there was a rest. So you are um, kind of making this, you know, um, they are dissimilar and these parts are similar, for example. and. So anyways, this is an example uh, of a Peshrev, which um, structurally, there's no repetition. And uh, so if we are trying to do this you know, verse chorus detection thing, it will uh, fail, because there's no chorus, basically. But to make the problems worse, uh, this Peshrev has some kind of similarities, as you can see, like these crosses, which the uh, notations are very similar to each other. It's basically some subtle differences in the melodic progression. So if you are trying to do verse chorus detection in this, not only it won't find any of this, but it will actually uh, give, give like false positives. Like it will say, hey, I have found, found a chorus in here, probably. So these will complicate the matters. And uh, actually for us, maybe uh, cover song detection might be a little bit more relevant. Because uh, basically the cover in the cover song detection, uh, what people are trying to do is uh, find if two uh, audio recordings are of the same work. So for example, um, this is an example uh, I, t I took from Joan Serra's uh, previous research. So these axes are again the time axis of um, Beatle, a Beatles song versus a cover and a non-cover. So in the first you can easily see these regularities and in the second as you can expect, there are none. So the task is basically to find if there are these regularities, and then uh, we can, if there are regularities, then we can conclude they are cover songs. And, and these, uh, these are done in a, uh, like maybe we can say like the score and the uh, audio are definitely repre like two representations, and they are not unique. So we can also kind of uh, think of them as covers of each other as the same work. Not uh, strictly speaking in a musicological way, but in a more conceptual way. And to kind of go further, what we are basically doing is actually, it can also be thought of as image processing, because we are working on uh, these 2D uh, images, and we are trying to find like some regularities, let's say some valleys, some hills, or uh, some lines. So, uh, for example, we can use these morphological operations, which are pretty straightforward for the last 34 years, using image processing or this blob detection uh, image processing thing. I'm not really sure if you are seeing, but there are like red lines in the uh, 
in here, like it's showing the contours of the building in red. Or uh, we can use this uh, geodesics, which is basically applied math, and uh, is the idea is basically to find uh, the closest uh, path between two points in a 3D topographical map. So uh, now I will kind of go further with uh, the methodology, and this is the basic block diagram of what I'm doing. So um, the, I'm, the first task is to gather the information and uh, we are kind of trying to do it in a linked way. As we, uh, Moha explained it a little bit with uh, Comp Music Browser yesterday, so we are kind of doing parallel things. And then I'm trying to uh, extract these descriptions to uh, find a um, common uh, consensus between the scores and the audio. Like, yeah, they are parallel, but they are not the same thing altogether. So, uh, how can we find these two uh, like relevant representations to link them? And after I get those, I try to estimate candidates, like where the sections in the score correspond to uh, in the audio. And after I find these candidates, the last part is the hierarchical, uh, as I call it, the hierarchical linking part. And in this one, we are kind of trying a top-down approach to um, align the linked sections and remove any erroneous candidates. And the first um, block, if we kind of zoom into this, it is something like uh, this. So we have some data from Music Brains. It gives us the artists who compose something, who is playing these. We have the audio recordings associated with it, and we have the work. And uh, in Music Brains, we kind of have the makam, usul, and the form together. So then we uh, use this uh, way to kind of link, backlink the audio recordings and the symbolic data. To start with, we know like they are of the same work. Like we don't need, really need to scavenge any uh, where to find this. And on top of it, I'm using some additional metadata, which is not typical. Um, which is not present in the audio or the score. For example, um, I'm not really sure if you can see now, but uh, for example, the theoretical metadata, like uh, what is um, the model center of this piece, uh, or what are the theoretical intervals and stuff. And then um, what I do with this data is I kind of try to uh, calculate these things, which uh, we have termed as the pitch counters. Uh, they are um, basically, maybe I should first uh, start with the audio, then it will be clear. Um, we are, uh, when we get the pitch, uh, we will have like uh, lots of, let's say, artifacts. Like, uh, I'm not saying like synthetic or uh, something, but for example, there will be embellishments which are not present in the score. So it will make it harder to uh, link those two. So what we are doing is kind of removing these stuff which we wouldn't see in a score, so make it like more regular, so it becomes like contrast. And in the synthetic pitch counter, what we are doing is we are getting the theoretical data from here. Uh, we are getting the symbolic data. We kind of convert it to an audio thing, but what we are doing is actually we interchange the uh, theoretical metadata, the theoretical intervals with the actual tuning. So we do this tuning uh, analysis and we get the karar tone, the tonic, and then we get the intervals. And if possible, we exchange it with the theory. So uh, it will make us, uh, like conceptually and computationally, it will make us our task much easier. And afterwards, uh, like once we have this bunch of um, section like synthetic pitch counters and we have this you know main audio pitch counter uh, we basically tuck them inside and uh, do this similarity matrix but this time it's not self similarity so uh, this y axis is the pitch uh, synthetic pitch counter and this x axis is the one which we uh, captured from the audio and um, we do these things Again, you won't be able to see uh, the regularities, but uh, there are, you can kind of notice the Teslim sections around here. 
So what we do is to first kind of make this prominent, we are using this uh, image processing technique which I mentioned, the morphological operations, to kind of make the, um, let's say the wall is uh, much deeper. And afterwards we do some kind of thresholding and we do structural component analysis to get these blobs. And we kind of uh, remove out the noises and we have this you know, very diagonalized uh, way of representation. So now you can kind of see where the test limbs are uh, inside the audio uh, with respect to the uh, scores. And afterwards we also do this uh, now very pretty straightforward transformation called Hugh transformation. Um, it's basically the uh, processing technique tries to find these lines which are uh, very prominent. So as you can see, the, uh, our algorithm found like lots of lines in these regions. And then we do some kind of operations uh, using the typical analytical geometry. Like if these lines are kind of on top of each other, just get the biggest one. If there is like a uh, erroneous one in here because there might be a repetition in it, but they are parallel. So why don't we just get the bigger one because it encloses the smaller one anyways. And sometimes we lose stuff like this, as you see, but um, this is where the hierarchical matching kind of uh, hits inside. So afterwards, um, we will get all these you know, parallel uh, ways, like we did the um, estimation for the HNAs, and we did the estimation for the Teslim. So um, you, as you can, these are the first four HNAs, and this is the Teslim, basically. So because uh, to start with we know how the form should progress then we can actually use this information to kind of deduce where those sections should be and uh, we can use this you know fuzzy like unknown information or wrong information and correct it so what we are doing is, is basic like this okay this is the first sign and it is in the start just keep it and then i don't need this because i have already done it and it shouldn't be in the first place so for the Second, there is a test limb, it's cool. In the second honey is there, we have already ditched that. So in this one, there is a third honey and a test limb. So maybe the guy might have missed to the third honey somehow, but I mean, if you see a test limb, it has much more importance. So it's probably this way. And then we kind of go further and we see like, okay, we have actually find the third honey in here, so let's, we should only keep this, not these two erroneous ones. Then the fifth, um, so the another test name. This place is not recognized, but it's fine because it is between two test names, and there is only the last sign missing. So it is definitely in here. So as we do this, uh, the system gets very robust. Like we don't really need to care about the problems in the image processing, like the false negatives, sorry, the false positives or the true negatives. So. Um, the system we have implemented, uh, it uses the symbolic notation uh, that was uh, developed by Kemal Karosmanoğlu. And um, as everybody, I'm also using Macam Toolbox for the tuning analysis and F0 estimation. And to kind of um, mention, like uh, it uses Yin and it applies some post-processing to uh, deal with the active errors and it also discretizes um, some of the pitches, so it makes the stuff easier for us. And then I ha uh, we have implemented the main framework in MATLAB. And the, the initial data set we used is uh, from nazen.com. Uh, these pieces are kind of uh, easier because uh, there are like the uh, performer basically picks the stuff and he kind of corrects them and then he plays on top of them. So we know they are associatable somehow. And uh, these are kind of the data we picked. It's right now very small. So I'm not going to claim any statistical significance, but we have tried to pick the hard ones. Like if we have less time, let's just pick the hard ones. Uh, so for example, this one is, uh, it doesn't have the test limb. It's, um, it has four harness. So this is a hard one. Then this one, and uh, the test limbs are repeated inside the section. So he plays the test limbs twice in the piece. And that piece also has another tuning. So I can at least say like I have tried it uh, with three different tunings. And 
And before uh, pre-hierarchical matching, this is kind of the results we get. The system is pretty nice. It's, it is able to link 72 uh, sections inside the audio. And it gives like some, it cannot um, find anything to match for uh, 12 uh, stuff. And it, it gave like 13 errors. But actually, the, uh, auto, the 8 is actually the color detection failed in this. And uh, to tackle this uh, very easily, we just kind of manually corrected them from Macam toolbox. And basically, we got the uh, last note. And then um, afterwards, we did this. Uh, we checked the post-hierarchical thing. And basically, the system was able to uh, find all the links. And it didn't make any errors or uh, it didn't. Uh, it wasn't confused. But again, to state, I'm not saying uh, there is any statistical significance. Um, so, and I, I can maybe um, say like this is the proof of concept. So by the end of September, we when we are actually publishing these, we will see more data. And uh, one of the advantages is the system is pretty fast. So uh, if we are trying to do like dynamic programming. Um, like I will explain it on audio score alignment, uh, the initial results. It takes like eight minutes or something, uh, and I'm. But with this, it's like five seven seconds. So it's very straightforward, and it's very. Uh, it's also it gets nice results, and uh, we also started some initial experiments on audio score alignment, which the pitch counter term actually helped us a lot because now it is tracking in a fuzzy way and it's not trying it, it doesn't get confused with embellishments and other non notated stuff and they are pretty much okay but uh, there are still lots of works and um, so our plan is basically to carry this and maybe we will do like some comparative studies and see like how different methodologies um, will help us to uh, do like section matching so we can maybe generalize the huge transformation to detect blobs instead of lines and we can use these uh, geodesics or we can directly jump to some time series analysis like SACS or something and yeah we'll see like where it goes so um, thank you and if you have any questions